Thank you for joining us today for this life-changing message from River of Life. If you are ever in our area, we would love for you to join us. For more information, click the link below or download our app in the App Store under ROL Crawfordville. Now, let's join guest speaker Bill Jenkins as he teaches from the Word of God. River of Life! Y'all act like y'all glad to be here today. I'm excited about the opportunity to come and just to be here. And there's not a preacher in the house that doesn't wish he was preaching this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Henry, for allowing us this privilege. Uh, our scripture this morning is going to come from the book of Psalms. If you've got your Bible, please take it and find the 37th division of the book of Psalms. Been admonished on Wednesday nights by Brother Derek Gray to study the Old Testament. What a blessing Derek Gray is. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. I uh, just want to stop and praise the Lord for a moment for the teachers and the preachers that God has assembled here at River of Life and how they pour into my life. Uh, before you think I'm getting prideful, I don't count myself in that number. I'd be blessed just to carry their Bible to the pulpit for them. I, I sat in total amazement and listened and was inspired by our pastor last Sunday morning. Say amen right there. And as he was waxing eloquent, I sat there on that front pew and thought to myself, I wonder if I'll be able to preach like that when I'm that old. Don't you just love old folks, amen? You never know what old folks are going to say. After retirement home the other day, and there was two old men sitting out there on the porch, and one of them looked at the other and said, Now, Joe, remind me, for I, I forget, was it you or your brother that died in World War II? <laughs> Lin Linda and I were going through some boxes at the house the other day, and uh, came across this box and opened it up and it had this beautiful heart-shaped locket in it. And I said, is this yours? She says, yeah, that's old. I said, well, what is it? She said, it's a, a memory locket. You put things in there, then, you know, you remember it. I, and, and, and she said, it's got some of your hair in there. <laughs> I said, baby, I'm not dead. She said, I, you know, I, I'm not gone. And she said, no, but your hair is. <laughs> Back in 1897, a few years ago, a fellow by the name of Oatman Johnson wrote this. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. The fourth verse of that song says this, so amid the conflict, any of you there this morning? Whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. That brings me to our scripture this morning, Psalms 37 and verse number 23. The Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. Now, this verse naturally breaks down into three divisions. First two, I'll just mention the third. I'll spend a little time on. The first one is this. That there is a process in life. The psalmist said the steps. It is not a standing still. It is a progression. It, it involves an ongoing movement. Some translations say the, the walk of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Now, we know this is not the literal moving of the feet. 
but rather it is the progression of time that happens in the life of every individual. As a young man, my parents would tell me as I would go out into the evening driving an automobile, Bill, watch your steps. Meaning that I was to be careful about how I was living my life. It speaks of our life and who is in charge of that life. Years ago, I had the privilege of preaching my father's funeral. At that time, the Lord gave me uh, something that I have never forgotten, and it was specifically for my dad. And uh, this is what it was, that our life is like a book. It has many pages and many chapters. Sometimes as we're reading the page of our life, it is good, and we want to stay on that page a long time. There are other pages that are not good, and we want to hasten past those. But dear friend, we do not get to turn the page that is only done by our Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The second thing I I would bring to your attention in this passage of Scripture is the person of the progress. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, In my lifetime, I I have seen about four that I could readily identify types of goodness. The first one I I would mention to you uh, is this, is what I refer to as inherited goodness. Children are taught by their parents to be good. Deuteronomy chapter number six points out the fact that it is the parent's responsibility to teach a child to do good. He's not supposed to lie. He's not supposed to steal. He is supposed to walk in a way that would honor his parents. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14 relate to us that the majority of the people that are on the earth today are not saved. They're lost. In fact, the Bible says there is a broad way that leadeth to death, and many there be that go in thereat, but there is a straight way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. And so you've got few on one side, you've got many on the other side. Many outweighs few every time. So the majority of the children upon the face of the earth today are being raised by parents that are not saved. And yet even those parents teach their children, don't lie. Don't don't steal, don't curse. It is inherited goodness. Moral principles handed down to them from their parents. There's a second type of goodness. I call this improved goodness. This is when a person realizes that what they're doing is wrong and they try to do better. They turn over a new leaf. They try harder. They, 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 They purpose in themselves that they're not gonna do a certain thing Again, I woke up with a song on my heart this morning. I'll not sing it to you. You'll be blessed by that. The title of the song was Last Kiss. It was sung sung years ago by a fellow by the name of Frank Wilson and the Cavaliers. Here's the chorus. Oh, where, oh, where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven. Here it is. So I've got to be good. So I can see my baby when I leave this world. The mentality of the world is wrapped up in that course. First, every time somebody dies, we say the Lord took them. That's not scriptural. Do you know your Bible says in John chapter 10 that Satan is a murderer? Do you understand that Job's children were killed by the devil? And if you're not careful, he'll kill your children. He's a murderer, he's a thief, he's a liar. He is a, that one that's after their soul. The second thing that I would point to you from this crazy little old worldly song is not only the thought that God takes everybody, but that everybody goes to heaven. The song says she's gone to heaven. And isn't that the case? I've never been to a funeral where somebody walked up, looked in the casket and said, well, he lived his whole life like the devil and now he's gone to meet him. Never had that happen. The third misconception of that course is that I've got to be good so that I can go and see my baby 
when I leave this earth. The mentality of the world is that if I am good enough, when I reach the end of my life, God's going to put it in the scales. And if I'm good enough, I get to go to heaven. There's a third type of goodness, if I can. And that's what I call imitated goodness. Uh, trying to be like someone else. Uh, trying to be like dad because dad was a good man. Uh, perhaps uh, even trying to be like Jesus, striving and laboring to do that which is right. All three of these end in utter frustration, defeat, and failure. These three trying to do their best in their own power, these three men judging other men, saying, oh, preacher, if anybody deserved to go to heaven, he deserved to go to heaven. Preacher, if there was ever a good man, he, he's a good man. But the problem is this book. A word from a holy God that says in Isaiah 64 and verse number six, but we are all as an unclean thing. All of our righteousness as filthy rags. If our righteousness looks like filthy rags in the sight of God, reckon what our sins look like in the sight of God. The Bible goes further and says, we do all fate as a leaf, our iniquities like the wind would have taken us away. Very familiar passage of scripture, Romans 3 and verse number 23. The word of God says, for all have sinned. All means all, and that's all that all means. All have sinned. And then this phrase, and we've come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter three, again, in verse number 10, the Bible says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Ecclesiastes seven in verse number 20, the word of God says, for there is not a just man upon the earth, one that doeth good and sinneth not. Try as hard as you like. You can never, ever, 10,000 lifetimes ever be good enough to stand in the presence of a holy God. But there's a fourth goodness. Thank God for that. Amen. I'm referring to this simply as imputed goodness. It's found over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 21, where the word of God says this on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, for he, that's God, made him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The only way to truly be a success at being good is to be saved by the grace of an almighty God. Second Corinthians 5, 17 also says this. If any man be in Christ. Boy, that's a big word, isn't it? If any man be in Christ. I know a lot of people are trying to be in Christ, but if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things. I love that. All things are made new. If you hear nothing else I hear, say this morning, please hear this. I am not a righteous man because of who I am. I am a righteous man because of whose I am. I belong lock, stock, and barrel to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's any goodness about me, <laughs> it's all because of him. I love that old song, if you could see what I once was, if you could go with me back to where I started from, I know that you would see a miracle of grace divine that brought me to this place and made me what I am today, just an old sinner. Saved by grace. Well, I'm thankful I'm saved today. Amen. Yeah.
You ought to get excited every once in a while about what Jesus has done. You ought to tell the devil, do your best, buddy. I belong to the Lord. And nothing, according to Romans chapter 8, can separate me from the things that are in Christ Jesus. And I'm one of them things. Thank God for that. Now I want to move to the, Diane, that's my introduction. <laughs> Psalms 1, <laughs> y'all laughing like you think I'm joking. <laughs> Psalms 237, verse number 23. The word of God says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In this verse, we've seen already the progression. It is a walk. It is the step. You're headed to an appointment, Hebrews 9, 27. Your life is going to end. The steps of a good man. And then we've seen the, the process of being a good man. Only through the blood of Jesus and the righteousness, the imputed righteousness of our king. But here's this third thing. And that is the promise of the verse. The steps of a good man are ordered. Now, unless you study the Bible, you miss so very, very much. I was doing some study several weeks ago now in my uh, little office there at the house, and I saw that word ordered, and it just jumped off the page at me. I, I said, well, I'll, I'll need to do some research here. So I took my old Strong's Concordance. It tells you how old I am, doesn't it? And I opened it up and I, I found the word in the verse and I looked over in the back of the book to uh, number 3553. And I found that that little word ordered there in the Hebrew is a word that you and I would pronounce kun. And it's actually given to you in the book K-O-O-N. And then the meaning of the Hebrew word ordered. And it has over 20 different definitions. Oh, we just, we just thought it was the word order. Oh no, there's much more here than just that. The first thing that I would point out to you today is that this little word ordered literally means to fashion. It means to create something by the deliberate act of one's will. Let me tell you what the Bible says about you, my dear friend. Psalms 135 and verse number 16 and 15, 15 and 16, the Bible says, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. I love this. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Do you understand what he said? Let me put that back into the uh, 20th century vernacular of North Mississippi. Before I was ever a gleam in my daddy's eye, God already had me figured out. He fashioned me before I was ever anything. The word curiously wrought there in Psalms 139 gives an idea of someone working with a tapestry and they're pulling the needle and, and all of the ugly threads are hanging down beneath. But when, when the tapestry is finished, the weaving together of all of the strings brings forth a beautiful work. Yes, sir. Can I say something to you this morning? In the sight of a holy God, you are beautiful. In fact, God so loves you that he's willing to give his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross just so you might be saved. Oh, he is in the process of fashioning us, regardless of who you are. God has been in work in your life. You were created for his glory. His desire is for you to be saved. You got scripture for that preacher? I'm so very glad you asked. Your Bible says over in 2 Peter chapter 3, that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. And for us, some of us, it took a long time. 
Amen. Amen. Some of you, he's still working on. Long suffering towards one. Not willing that any, any, no one is destined for hell. God sent his son that all might be saved. You're not an accident. You were fashioned by the Lord. Now, now you need to quit trying to be like somebody else. God knows what he's doing, and he's never made a mistake. Now, you turn to the fellow looking, sitting by you on the pew, and you might think, well, he come close. (laughs) There is no one here that is exactly like you. And there's nobody else that can be you. And if you don't be you, then you won't ever exist. So be you. God fashioned you for this day. Secondly, that little word, the Lord has ordered their steps, carries with it the the, the connotation, the definition of something being furnished. Over in Psalms 37, read it with me again. The Bible says, verting in in verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. Listen to what he says. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hands. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. My Heavenly Father is a loving Heavenly Father who meets the needs of his children. I want to tell you, as an evangelist, in the beginning when I surrendered to to become an evangelist, I had one meeting. How'd that work out for you, preacher? I've never missed a meeting. You can tell that, can't you? I, uh, I was sharing with somebody a while ago, you know, 10 years ago, this suit fit differently than it does now. God has met every need in my life. It, listen, I was a redneck from North Mississippi who did not know a verse of scripture when God swept in upon my life and I got saved at the glorious age of 20. I'd been baptized three times already. Let me tell you, baptism won't get you there. But when you truly get saved and God comes in and takes up residence and the resident becomes present, the effect becomes evident and all the world can see that you're a child of God. Oh, if you could just see what God has done. Listen to what the Bible says. Back up a verse of scripture. Psalms 37, verse 16. Listen to this. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Woo! (laughs) You drive by over at 70 Carmen Rocio and you say, well, that preacher lives in a little old bitty house. You ain't seen the finished product. I got something waiting on me. (laughs) I can't wait to get there to see all the things. The Bible says, I have not seen nor ear heard nor have it entered into the mind of man. All that God has got prepared for them that love him. Well, there's there's a third thing that that little word means that that when he says it's ordered by the Lord, it, it means that it's fitted together. Uh, It's a picture of a man creating something in this hand and then creating something in this hand and then bringing them together so that it fits perfectly. I can look back over my life and I see how that God has done that so many, many times. I had just gotten out of the military and uh, my, we, we were raised in North Mississippi, and when I got out of the military, my mom and dad had moved to Panama City, but I found them. <laughs> they just thought they could get rid of me. And, I, and on a certain night, I had no earthly idea what God was doing. But God took me and my brother to a certain place, and there... I saw a certain girl 
There must have been 150 girls there that night, seemed like to me. But I only saw one. And come March the 29th of this year, me and that girl would have been married 40, will be married 49 years. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He is in the process of molding and making you. uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18, the word of God talks about the Holy Spirit of God fashioning you. Romans chapter eight says that the Holy Spirit of God is in the process of conforming you into the image of the Lord. He is in the process of fitting you together. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16 says this, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making, underline it, highlight it, put it in parentheses, increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. He's talking about the church. You need to come to the understanding that you are here on purpose. If you are visiting today, by design, God brought you to this church. Why? Because God is doing a work here and you're to be a part of it. If you are a member, you need to realize that you are in this church. You have been brought to this church to increase the church and to bring unity in the body as we follow the head of the body of the Lord Jesus and his under shepherd, the brother Henry Jones. Making increase of the body unto the edify of itself in love. Fitted. The steps of a good man are ordered. But there's a fourth one, and I, I, I'm not going to do all 20. Aren't you glad of that? <laughs> but I couldn't, I couldn't close out without saying that the steps of a good man, according to that little word, it means they're finished. Philippians 1, 6, the word of God says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will be faithful, he has done a good work in you, will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I'm 69 years old. I'll be 70 this year. Now, I know some of you don't believe that. In fact, I I think I heard several of you gasp when I said that. (laughs) But I stand before you today as a witness that we serve a God who's faithful. I, uh, when I surrendered to preach in Water Valley, Mississippi, (laughs) There were about 50 people there. I had no idea that God was going to take us where he took us. And that in these days that he would bring us here. Had he shown me that when I was 20 years old, I'd have probably found me a cave somewhere and hid out. Oh, do you understand that he is in the process of finishing your life? And the promise of scripture is he's going to guide you all the way through. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Here's what the Bible says. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, listen to this, looking unto Jesus, the author. Oh, I'm glad it started with him, amen. I'm glad there was a day when he broke in on where I was 
And through the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, I cried out and said, God have mercy. But he doesn't save me to leave me. He is the author. But the Bible goes further and said he is the finisher of our faith. For, for my, my greatest joy in life is not what he has done. It is not even so much in, in what he is doing. My greatest joy in life is looking forward <laughs> to what he's going to do. Y'all, y'all, y'all know what a, a fortune teller is? A fortune teller is one of those people that supposedly can see into the future and to tell you what your future is. Well, I'm a self-appointed fortune teller. Uh, I'm telling my own future this morning. Do you want me to tell you what my future is? Would y'all like to know? Would you? I got one or two, three, maybe. Here's my future according to the word of God. Jude 1, 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you, listen, faultless, faultless before his presence, his glory with exceeding joy. One glorious daybreak, he's going to show up, amen. John wrote this in John chapter number three. He said, beloved, (laughs) what manner of love is this that we should be called the sons of God? It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we will see him and we will be like him. That's my future. Made possible by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. J. Wilbur Chapman wrote this, loving, excuse me, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. (laughs) One day, he's coming. Oh, glorious day. Are you saved? Next week, I'll be down in uh, Keaton Beach, Florida preaching. And I'm going to ask him one question. Are you saved? You see, it matters not the eloquent of the sermon. What matters is whether or not you got the message. That's right. That's right. The steps of a good man are under, in, and through the control of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to save you this morning. You said, preacher, I don't, you, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've been involved in. You don't know the people I run with. Dear friend, I want you to know there's a Savior in heaven who says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come now unto me, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll wash you whiter than snow. That's a promise you can count on. He will grab you and love you and order your step. Your life will bring forth meaning and purpose only if you come to him, come surrender to his calling. You hear this morning, you say, preacher, I know I'm saved. But man, I sure have gone a long way away from here. There was a day when, when I got excited about the things of God. There was a day when, when I knew him. But that's been a long time ago. Preacher, if it could just be like it used to be, it can. So many verses of scripture in your Bible, but let me give you this one. First John 1, 9, the word of God says that if we, that's you and me, confess our sins, that he, that's God, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wouldn't you like to go home clean this morning? Wouldn't you like to go home knowing that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed you whiter 
than snow itself. God in grace and mercy brought you to this place so that you could hear old fat bald headed man tell you there's a God in heaven. He loves you more than you can possibly comprehend. And he's inviting you. Come. Whoever you are, you come. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to stand very prayer, prayerfully, very reverently to your feet. Our, our praise team is coming back to the stage. In just a moment, we'll have an invitation. I'm going to invite you to come. Pastor Henry's here. Our other staff are here. This morning is your morning. You know, we can preach and we can sing and we can do, we can do everything, but different. we can't make the decision that you have to make for you. You have to make that this morning. I'm going to ask you to pray with me right now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed all over the building. Father God, in Jesus' name, because your word says it's through the power and drawing of the Holy Spirit, John 6, 44. I pray God right now, unleash your Holy Spirit on this congregation. God, help us to quit lying to ourselves. Help us, Lord God, to see ourselves as you see us today. There are many here who, they're trying to be good enough. They're try, trying to work their way. Oh, if they could just hold on. No. This morning, they need to quit trying. And they need to start trusting. And they need to come and be saved. To have it settled in their heart for eternity. And then there's others. Walking in the world we get filthy and we need you to wash away all of our stains and this morning God in Jesus name I pray flood these these altars flood these altars Lord with, with the saints of God who are praying for other people in this building who need to be saved flood this altar Lord with those who are coming to, to recommit their life to you to give back to you, God, what they once gave you so long ago. And Lord God, we're praying this morning. Bring those who need Jesus Christ, who are willing to quit trying and start trusting. May it be so in Jesus' name. Thank you again for watching our message from River of Life. If this message has touched you today, or if you need someone to pray with, please contact our office at 850-926-1200 or email us at info at We also want to encourage you to visit us Sunday mornings at 1030 or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Please visit us at rolcrawfordville.com for more information and directions.